I'm Raylene, and I kind of have a title. It's My Body, My Soul. I am a 14-year-old runaway. I stand there on University and 43rd, barely noticing the dry grass poking my ankles. I'm gazing through a kitchen window that has with a soft glow out the dark, chilly night. I see a girl inside. She is washing dishes. Her nightly chore. She is my younger sister, standing where I wish I could be. I turn and walk away with nowhere to go. A scent of food is in the air. Grilled meat of some sort, the scent of greasy fried tortillas. My gut is hurting from being hungry. A pain so intense, it feels like my gut kicked me in my back. There's a taco shop right over there, and a liquor store too. I go in and steal a pint of Jack Daniels. Jack keeps my thoughts and feelings at bay. It makes the long, cold nights a bit more bearable. There are other street people out at night. We always seem to gravitate to one another. One of them has a bottle of wine, the good kind. Only costs 97 cents. It's a very sweet wine with a picture of a train on the label, and it gets us really fucked up. There is a man in this group, stocky and dark-skinned, wearing prison blues, also known as dress outs. His name is Spooky, and he is fresh out of the joint. His black hair is greased back with the widow's point. He keeps putting his arm around me, and I duck away. I see the big 18th Street tattoo that covers the back of his hand. All of a sudden, as a quick as gust as wind, he has one hand around my neck, his face and mine. Bloodshot eyes, hot breath, piercing pain from the knife that he has pressed against my ribs. Quit fucking talking to other people, he says. I try to figure out how to get away. Ah, I tell him I need to go to the bathroom, but he escorts me. He fucking carries me to the bathroom. The underground bathroom at 4th and Broadway. He comes in the bathroom with me. I stay quiet, use the toilet, wash my hands. The whole time he's guarding and watching like a hawk. I don't get away. That is the first time he beats me. He's keeping me. I am a prisoner. I am 15. Spooky takes me to New Mexico, a dusty, windy little town. A year's passed since I left that safe place I call home. A year since they last heard from me. I am their missing child. I never traveled this far from home before, and I have no idea where I am or where the highways are. We stay in a home built of adobe, so different from the houses in California. I love adobe houses. I end up pregnant. I love being pregnant, my baby so safe inside me. At times I sit with my body huddled over, arms wrapped around my belly, and just hold on. It's my baby, my little person growing inside me. This gives me a comfort inside my miserable, trapped life. I'm 18, and even though I'm pregnant with my third baby, once again, he beats me. His reasons, maybe I sighed, cried or laughed. He tattoos me, my body scarred with his name, with a homemade prison-style tattoo gun. He threatens to make me a prostitute. He controls what I wear. He tells me he'll take me to court if I leave. He'll take my children away. I marry him at a notary public office. I hate it. It is a gloomy day. I'm his property now, and he owns me. Papers prove it. No wedding, no love. Just got beat days before for trying to leave. My head's still lumpy from being hit. I wear a dreary brown dress, and I'm so skinny, nothing fits. We take a Polaroid picture, and he's so proud of that picture. He doesn't even seem to care that I'm not smiling. Marrying him is just another thing to do to survive him. It's December 31st, and I don't even realize it's New Year's Eve. I'm 21, two days past my birthday, and baby number four is born.
God, I love my babies. They are my strength. I leave so many times, sneak out while he's asleep. With each new child born, it is a challenge. I would have a baby under one arm, holding the toddlers by the arm, walking as fast as they can, but to where? I start trying to get restraining orders. I explain to the officer everything I can, but I'm so nervous, shaking, everything spilling out in jumbled words. I'm grateful the order, but I have to serve Spooky the papers. The order says Spooky has to stay away, finally. He doesn't take it seriously. He comes over every day, just sits there. I run across the street to use the phone, and he just grins and leaves. I'm terrified, but determined. The police aren't much help. They say, ma'am, we can't keep going out there for nothing. Well, maybe when I'm dead, you'll do something. I say, I hang up, drained and hopeless. Plus, my grandma lives alone. One night, Spooky tells me what a shame it would be if she were to turn on her stove and that house blew up. I give up. Ten years pass, and I make a friend, something that's not allowed. Sherry, my coworker, my secret friend. She's a teeny but tough chick, a single mom, raising two teenage boys, owns her own home, and has her own car. On downtime, she teaches me how to drive a stick shift, and I start to confide in her. I start to have hope. I just might be a strong woman too, like her. She says, fuck that asshole. You can get out of this, but we gotta set it up. Just right, be patient. She helps me plan to get away, and I'm excited, very determined. But Spooky shows up at my job. I'm nervous. Spooky can see it. What's going on, he demands. The excitement's still pumping through me. from talking to Sherry. I blurt out, I am leaving. I am taking my kids and we are leaving. I'm really shocked at myself and I never told him that before. And it makes me feel like I could do it. I feel so confident but still scared. But it's different this time. And it hasn't been easy. It's been a struggle to be free, to be deprogrammed. But I did it. I have new friends and friends that care about me. I am not alone. One night, I call my parents and I call my sister. Years have gone by, we haven't talked. She is thrilled to hear from me and I'm okay. She's always looked up to me, thought I was the strong one. I tell her everything. I tell her I left him she is so happy for me, and she says, I can't believe it. I can't fucking believe you put up with that and for so long. People just don't understand, but I do. He may have owned my body for a while, but never owned my soul. I tell my sister of that night long ago, the time I stood outside that kitchen window, watched her wash dishes, she then tells me a story. Of a time there seemed to be a homeless person using the laundry room in their apartment building after I had run away, stealing clothes from the dryer, stashing stuff there. And she had always hoped it was me. That's all. The Little Korean Cop.